Good morning, Laurie. How is everybody this morning? You look so beautiful. It is good to see you this morning. I pray that God has given you a wonderful, peaceful week last week. And I know he blessed you because you're here, right here in the building in front of us. And so I thank him for his blessings upon your life. Our scripture this morning is really brief. And it comes from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and it comes from the 19th verse. And it's the verse, and it reads, Forget the former things. That's last year. Do not dwell on the past. That's yesterday. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I heard something this week that said, if you, you should stop dwelling on your failures of last year because you can't do anything about them. They're gone. And you can't bring them forward because they'll weigh you down in the new year. So let's just do what the word's saying. Forget about it. Let it go. And let us move forward. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this day, and Lord, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Father, because you are God. I thank you that you have protected us, that you have kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, you provided for us this week. We know that there are some that didn't have, but you provided for us financially, whether we have the, all the wealth we need, but you provided. You provided food and shelter. And the food may not have been um, steak or shrimp or lobster, but you provided nourishment for us, Lord God. And I, I just want to thank you for that. I thank you for providing for us as you did for the Israelites in, in the desert, Lord God. Father, I thank you for each and every opportunity that we have to come into your house to fellowship and to hear the word, Lord God, to worship you one more time. 
And I thank you that we live in a country, Father, that we can openly worship you and praise you and open our Bibles and read them and that we can hear the word, Lord God. That doesn't happen all over this world, but we thank you that we can. Father, I ask that you would bless every person under the sound of my voice, whether they're in the sanctuary or online, Lord God. You know every need there is, Lord God. You know every sickness, every pain, every temperature, every ache, Lord God. And I'm asking you to meet each and every one of us where we are with our needs, Lord God. I ask that you would touch their finances and allow them to continue to meet their obligations and do the things that they need to do. And I thank you that you allow us to do some of the things that we want to do that's not necessary a need. Father, go into the hospitals and touch the sick and nursing homes. Touch the lonely and the hopeless ones there, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would even go into the prison system, Lord God, and touch those that are there. Give them a heart to know more about you, Lord God. Whatever thing that's happened in their life, help them give it to you, Father, so that you can heal and bless. I ask, Lord God, that you will bless this service today. Bless the man of God that's bringing the word. I ask that he speak the word boldly, Lord God, and that we will receive what it is you have for us. And Lord, as we go through this week, let us keep our mind and our hearts stayed on you. Let us stay focused on the cross, Lord God, and let us forget about the past and look to the future. Because Lord, this year I know you are doing a new thing and we here at Lari just want to join you in what you're doing. So, Lord God, I ask that you touch the hearts and the minds of our leaders, Lord God. Give them the word. Give them direction so they can impart it upon us and we can continue to do what it is that you have called for Lari to do, Lord God. Let us be that light in a dark world. In the devotion today, Lord God, it said that people that come to church are hurting. This is where hurting people should come. Give us what we need to give back to the community, Lord God. And Father, in all that we do, all that we do, every word that's spoken, every song that's sung, every message that's given, we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we just said thank you now. And everyone said amen. 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 So it's, it seems strange this past week that as busy as we were before the holidays, we weren't as busy, but <coughs> I am thankful for that. And if you have not been on 10 for 10, I say this all the time, if you weren't on 10 for 10, you are missing something. We had a wonderful message this morning with questions asked. That's not in the book, that was deep questions. And if you were on it, I know you are still thinking about it and meditating, but it's not over with. So we go for 10 days, the first 10 days of every month, we do what we call 10 for 10, and it's a devotional, where you come in online, we use the daily bread, and someone gives a little brief message of that story today and do a prayer. And let me just tell you, starting your day with prayer is absolutely amazing. No matter what you're going through or what you're doing, it just makes your day go a lot easier. Now, it's not going to keep you from going through. I want you to understand that. It's not going to keep you from trials. Understand that. It just makes it a whole lot easier to bear because you're in prayer and you have somebody praying with you. So if you haven't joined, please join us. We still have a few more days. Okay, end of year. I know I said this, and we'll say this through January. We're trying to get statements together for your donations, so please, if your address has changed, please update your information. Go to info at lyrachurch.org, and you can input your new address, your new phone number, wherever it is, because you do want your statement. It might help you not to have to pay so many taxes back this year. I'm just saying. And guys, I hope you've enjoyed your last couple of weeks of no Bible study and no prayer meeting. But let me just say, Wednesday night is prayer meeting and Bible study. Amen. Prayer meeting is at 6, and Bible study is at 6.30. So you've had a break. I hope you've enjoyed it. But now it's come back to starting diving deep into the Word. Well, hello there. Hi. How are you? It's so good to see you. She doesn't live here, but she's ours. So we have to acknowledge her every time she come home when she's one of our children. She's not a child anymore. We were talking yesterday about how our children are growing up. 
Whew, people bring your kids here, they get a great, they get taught about word and they grow up to be very, very good citizens. And the last, um, the last announcement is our children's church starts back this morning and we are looking for volunteers to help teach them. Now, we, we, if you saw them Christmas, you know they are, doing, they are learning the word of God. They are not in, they're not in their playing. They're actually learning the words of God. And so if you feel that God has led you to be a leader in front of our little children, and I'm asking you to pray about it. I'm not asking, unless God has told you when you were praying in the beginning of the year that you need to work with children. I'm asking you to pray about it and um, to think about helping our children. And, and if you do, you can contact the church office or Samantha, who is uh, probably in the back getting ready for the children. But let somebody know that you really are interested in working with our children. Remember, they are our tomorrow. And how we raise them today determines the type of person that they will be tomorrow. And I know, for me, when you raise up a child, as the Bible says, in the way they should go, and you put them in church and you teach them the word, they are not going to stray very far away from it. So pray about it and see if God is leading you to work with our children. Amen? Amen. Okay. Well, that's it for me. Shall we say amen and go home? No. No, 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 no. If you are ready, I would like for you to stand, if you can, if you're able, and join the choir in praise and worship. God bless you, and I pray that God gives you an amazing 2023.
of you had troubles out there? Just one? Two? Come on, come on, come on now. It's okay. I only see three, four. Yeah, come on. I know we've had troubles. Okay. But you know one good thing about the troubles that we have? Woo! Because of Jesus. These troubles, they don't last always. Don't laugh. They won't laugh. 
we serve, okay? Turn up the road, that's our way. church about two years ago, but trouble don't last always. COVID don't last always. Christ is bigger than COVID. But Lowry, I just want to tell y'all something this morning. I and the choir got something we want to tell y'all, and we can't tell y'all till y'all in the proper position. That's the proper position. Amen. Y'all ready? Well, y'all got to put a smile on y'all face. Y'all got to look like y'all want this. Quiet, help me out on the count of three. One, Ready. two, three. God, God loves you, you, and so do we. Amen. 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 Brother Henry, you want to say? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. And God is already at work, been working, and I have no doubt 
that you all have a lot to praise and thank him for. Amen. 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 Um, before, before we get on some stuff, um, I found this tuba being gay <laughs> in the parking lot. I don't know whose it is and I don't know what it's used for, but I, I, I <laughs> see me at the service if this is yours or if you need it. It is an inside joke, y'all. <laughs> I don't have enough, huh? <laughs> well, we can add up to the elders' budget for benevolence. I think we can get that done. Young folks are going, what is being gay? Don't worry about it. You live long enough. You'll know. You'll know. Um, first time visitors. We have any first time visitors. Would you all please stand? All right, all right, here we go. I'm going to introduce these folks here. Remember me telling y'all that I used to play basketball? Yes, and I could actually play? Yeah. I could. And that's my witness right there. That's, Flav, Flavo and I go back to the 1980-something. But we balled hard all over the city. This is one of my oldest and dearest friends. And that's his son, Kendall, his wife, Ruthie. And what's your name? You know I know your name, especially. <laughs> but these are my dear friends from way, way back. We are glad to have y'all. Do me a favor. Amen. Amen. They're going to give you a blue card like this. Ruthie, you get to be the secretary for the family. You just fill one out for the whole family so we can record y'all's visit. I'm glad. This, I was so surprised. When they came in, I was like, he got me nervous. I ain't never played, never nervous when we played ball. But God bless you to all of you all. You all could be seated. Thank you. That's my highest family. Um, I'm going to make this announcement, but this is going to probably be the last Sunday I do this. If uh, you have an envelope or need an envelope for your tithes, would you raise your hand? Okay. If you already have an envelope for your tithes, when you exit the sanctuary at the end of the service, you go out that door and drop them in that brown wooden box. You don't have to walk them around. And if you don't know where the brown box is, give it to one of the ushers. They will take care of it for you. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So it is now time for prayer. I didn't, I didn't even introduce my really, 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 really special guest, but y'all know him already. But I'm so excited that my grandson is here. What's up, Duke? What's up, Duke? And my daughter, Mia. So, he didn't even look right up. So, it is now time for prayer. So, if you want to come down to the altar and you want to pray, uh, and hook, hook up, link hands, you are welcome to do that. Uh, if you want to stay there in your seat, you can do that too. But it is now time for prayer, and uh, Minister Mary Small is going to come and pray for us this morning. Today is the last Bronco game of the season. Would you just say a special prayer for the Broncos? Before, before we pray together, I want to share a verse of scripture with you from Psalm 22, verse 3, which states, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. And you know, um, we don't believe in double occupancy. So if God is inhabiting our praises, that's not leaving room for the enemy. Bow your heads with me, would you? 
Eternal God, our Father, we come this morning with hearts overflowing with thanksgiving. Not so much about what we've got, but about who you are. You are mighty. You are holy. You're omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and so many other words that we could use. And when we get through, we still wouldn't describe all that you are. But thank you for the glimpse of you that we have as your children. We're so grateful that we can call you Abba Father, that you call us your friend, you call us your children, your sons and your daughters, that you look on us, that you watch over us, that you dispatch angels to protect us. We're mighty grateful for that. We give you all praise, honor, and glory for who you are and who we are in you. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we ask a special prayer for those who don't know you yet, who have not come to the understanding that Jesus is Lord and that we need you, Lord. No way we can make it without you. No way down here on this earth and no way to enter heaven except we call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe in him, accept him as Savior and Lord. We cannot stand before you without his blood. We pray right now that you would heal the sick, shelter those who are outdoors. Father, use us to help in that mission. Touch our hearts, stir us up, help us not to be selfish and callous and hard-hearted. Help us not to be filled with doubt, but to be filled with the love that you shower on us. Just as you've forgiven us, help us to be forgiving. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit in us. Thank you for the brand new mercies that we got up to this morning. Because we used them all up yesterday. Lord, we need new ones. And you've already supplied us with them. So we give you thanks for that. Bless this, the rest of this service. It's already been blessed, mm -hmm. but bless the rest of it. Yeah. Let no person leave here without a, a, a new song in their heart, yeah. a new hope, a new joy, a new determination to, as, as Grandma used to say, run on and see what the end going to be. Help us, Lord God. Heal us. Keep us. And we love you, Lord. We love you for who you are. We love your children. Help us to never, never give up, but to keep on keeping on. We pray this prayer, and we thank you in advance because your record is perfect. You hear us, and you answer us with what's best for us. Like they said, you may not come when we want you, but you're never late. You are never late. And your answers are always right. We pray again, Lord, thanking you in advance. In the precious, the powerful, and the perfect name of Jesus, our Lord. And the church said together, amen. 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 As you all make your way back to your seats. Um, I want to reiterate an announcement <laughs> earlier about our 10 for 10. And uh, where Tanessa? I'm good. Tanessa did the 10 for 10 this morning. And she asked three questions. I need those questions. You wrote them down? You got them? I need, so you or Tanessa need to get them to me. But the reason why I raised the 10 for 10 is because I was having lunch with a friend of mine who lives across town, goes to another church. And we were just eating, eating and talking, and he talked about the 10 for 10. 
And he said, I would like to join that. Do I have to be a member of Lowry? I said, no, you only have to be a member of the kingdom of God. And so you might have some friends or family members, and we know there's people all over the country who are dialing in for our 10 for 10. And so I want to make sure that we stress that, invite your family, your friends, your enemies, your neighbors, whoever they may be, because it is a sweet, sweet time, and the Lord is blessing us, and there's all kinds of things that are shared in that 10 for 10, but certainly we get to pray for one another. So I just want to encourage us to jump online, participate. You don't have to say anything, and that's what I told my friend. We may not even know you on the call, but you'll know that you're there, and God will know you'll be there. So Amen. would you all receive our choir, and then we'll come back when they're done with the message. Amen? Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the beginning of, <clears throat> of a new year, and I'm quite sure you may hear it in my voice when I... <clears throat> I got the members in the choir that always get me in trouble emotionally when I <laughs> sing this song. So what I, what I really want to say is, beginning of a new year, I want to give you all a message, and I want you to know who you belong to. You know, we uh, have our high flute job and our big bucks and the whole nine yards. However, until you know who you really belong to, you're not rich, you're not wealthy. And I'd just like you all to pray with us while we sing this song to you.
He divorced his wife. He said that he really didn't need a wife in the pros. When college, he needed a wife because she was good for social functions um, and looking out for their sons. But in pro football, she was an unnecessary accoutrement and a distraction to winning. He said winning football was his number one priority, and his two sons were set. You climb the ladder, you have success, and you decide that you're going to divorce your wife who bore two sons of yours because she's an unnecessary accoutrement. Because I've gone to the next level, and I can't take you with me because I don't really need you. The highest priority of my life is not God, not the wife that I just left, not the sons. It was winning, then my two sons. But contrast that with another coach who coached a long time in the NFL. He coached the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. He said that the thrill of knowing Jesus was the greatest thing that ever happened to him. He said, I think God has put me in a very special place, and he expects me to use it to his glory in everything that I do. He says, whether coaching football or talking to the press, I'm always a Christian. Christ is first. I didn't think y'all hear me. So let me say that again. Christ is first. Family is second. 
And football is third. That legendary coach was Tom Landry. Two contrasting coaches, both very successful on the field, but one was a failure at life because he had things out of war. As we continue going through the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to pick up in Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 25. If you all have a Bible, would you turn there with me? And if you don't have one, you will find the words on the screen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 35 through 34. And if you would stand to your feet in honor of reading God's word. Can y'all read that with me? He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on it. Is not life more than food in the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worry, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all of these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Before you take your seats, Father, we come before you today. And Father, we are grateful for your word. We're grateful for your worship or the worship that we get to offer unto you. But Father, we're grateful for the bread of life. May we eat hearty this morning. And Father, would you unpack and illuminate the scriptures for us Father God, that we might understand and know the heart of God, that we might follow and pursue the heart of God. Help us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you all from this thought. First things first. First things first. As we continue our discipleship training, I want you to notice that Jesus is summing up his thoughts on what kingdom citizens should pursue. Last week, we talked about avoiding trivial pursuits. Those things, that, those material things, those things of wealth and prestige and power and opulence, those things in society that tell us that we're somebody, that we should avoid those things. Because he says that you can't serve God and mammon, and wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Jesus now drives home the thought of the heart of kingdom citizens. He's driving home this idea of what the number one priority ought to be for kingdom citizens. Every kingdom citizen. Not most, not some, not a few, but if you are blood bought, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, we fall down, we get up Christians. This should be the pursuit. This is the priority of your life. When it comes to what we pursue, God's kingdom has to be at the top of the list. Amen? 
How do I know that Jesus is completing his thought? Look at the very first word in verse 25. Therefore, therefore tells you that you got to go back to see what the therefore is here for. He is completing this thought of avoid the trivial pursuits, and here's what you have to do, what you must do. He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on it, and all of those things. When you and I pursue things other than Christ, when treasures and riches that the world offers us and presents to us that we try to amass for ourselves, it causes something else. When it becomes what consumes your life, when it becomes the driving force of what you do, it creates something in you and me that God never intended for you and me. That's worry. How many of y'all have experienced worry? How many of y'all worried this morning? God never intended for the kingdom citizen to be worried. And the things that we worry about, most of that stuff never even happened. Most of the things that you and I pace the floor and wear on our carpets about, most of that stuff never happened. So many times we live in the land of worry and what if that we miss the wonder of the wow of God. So many times we're focusing on things that might go wrong that we miss the things that have gone right. The things that God has already done for us. And no matter what he delivered us from on yesterday, today's problem is so much bigger in our eyes. But God is always bigger than your trouble. Worry is passive. Worry requires nothing other than, you don't even have to stay awake because worry will keep you awake. Some folk can't sleep, they lay in the bed twiddling their thumbs. Some folk can't lay in the bed and stay up all night because they got to get up and walk the floor. Some folks is on the, go, on the phone with their girlfriend, boyfriend, talking about stuff that might happen. Worry is something that God never wants us to deal with. It's the, I wonder what. Maybe this. What if this happens? Do I have enough? Have we, have we accumulated enough? What if I run out of money? What if, what if this? What if that? What if this? We never ask about the good things or the positive things that can happen in the what if. He says, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not be anxious about any of these things. What you will wear. Some of us should worry about what we wear. Because sometimes folks not dressed appropriately. What you gonna eat? What you gonna drink? Is your life far more important than that? Anybody in here ever missed a meal? Because they didn't have. How many of us in this room have missed a meal because we didn't have? I turned 59 last week, and some of y'all are older than me. Can we count the days that you and I have lived on this earth and God has not provided for us not one day? What Sunday have you woke up and said, I don't have nothing to wear, as you stare into a closet full of clothes and shoes? Half of us can't keep our laundry done. We got so much stuff. Let me tell you something. When you and I worry and we ask the question, what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For all these things, he says, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows all of these things. These questions that you and I ask, where's my next meal going to come from? How do I pay the rent? What will I drive? With gas prices going up, though I have a car, can I put gas in the car? When you and I ask those questions, we suggest two things about God. Those questions are a personal affront to God. Because here's what it suggests. It suggests, one, that God doesn't know something. 
It suggests that God doesn't know something. And if we know anything about theology, we know that God knows everything. God knows everything that could have been known, anything that can be known, and anything that will be known in the future, God already knows that. So that's an attack and it's an assault on his very nature, that there may be something going on in your life that God does not know. It's also a front because the question is, is if God knows and he doesn't care about me. Now that's an attack on his very character. To say that God knows everything and he knows my situation, how dire it is, how bad it is, at least in my mind. But he won't do anything that God does not care about me. You may have bought into the lie of the enemy to tell you that God don't love you because you're not eating filet mignon. And all you got is beans and franks. But when your backbone is talking to your neck bone, beans and franks taste a whole lot like filet mignon. When your stomach is growling and roaring, cheese and crackers sound and taste a whole lot like twice baked potatoes. How dare us question the very nature and character of God? Does he care for us? And if you have ever asked that question, let me give you the answer. It is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. It says this, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. The scripture is very clear that God cares for you. He cares for you and me. Let me tell you what that says to us. These verses reveal something about God that the questions that we asked earlier cannot answer. Here's the first thing. God knows. God knows everything. But not only does God know everything, God cares about you. He cares about his creation. And you and I are the crown of his creation. So he cares about the birds of the air and the lilies of the field who are temporary, who burn up, and you've never seen a bird fall out of the air or go to the veterinarian and talk about, hey, doc, I got these ulcers, man. It's a shortage of worms these days. And I don't know how this is going to happen. You don't see that. And if he cares for that part of his creation, and you're the crown of his creation, then you have to know that he will provide for you. If he provided for them, he will provide for you. How many of y'all know that God is a provider this morning? How many of you all know that God can take care of whatever issue you face? We sang the song, Trouble Don't Last Always, but how many of us really believe that, that when we face a little bit of trouble or we face a lot of trouble, we turn to the God who knows, who cares, and can provide? Do we take all of our cares to the Lord? It says, don't worry about it. One of my favorite verses in the entire Bible is Psalms 37 and 25. Let me read it to y'all. Thought you know this one by heart, don't you? I once was young, but now I'm old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Go back through your mental roller decks, go back through the history of your life and ask the question what day did I see one of God's children standing on the corner begging for a loaf of bread? When have you ever seen God turn his back on somebody who was trying to do the right thing? There's some things that people say, there's some things that God can't do. This is one of the things that God cannot do. He cannot ignore his righteous nature that he won't provide for his folk. God won't pass over folk who love him, who are dedicated to him, who are devoted to him, and see them in need, and he won't address it. That's something that God can't do. His nature of love and care says, I have to take care of my people. So you don't have nothing to worry about. 
I had to get through that because I want y'all to get to the good part of this. Verse 33 says this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Jesus makes it very, very clear that the first thing is Christ. The first priority of our life, the first priority of every kingdom citizen is seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Those of you all that circle, highlight in your Bible, circle that verse, highlight it, underline it, do whatever you need to do. Because this single verse is at the heartbeat of the entire Sermon on the Mount. If you want to know what the entire Sermon on the Mount is, it is verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That all of the things that he said prior to that, everything that he's going to say in the rest of the Sermon on the Mount drives home the fact that you and I as kingdom citizens, our priority in life is to seek first the kingdom of God. Nothing else matters if you're not seeking the kingdom of God. Nothing else should hold value or you find important enough that it replaces seeking the kingdom of God. Now, I understand why some of us worry because we don't know what the kingdom of God is. And how can you seek it and go after it if you don't know what it is? You must first understand what the kingdom of God is in order to go find it. So how many of y'all know what the kingdom of God is? That's not rhetorical. Y'all talk back to me on this one. How many of y'all know what the kingdom of God is? Okay. So we've been sitting in church all our lives, reading the Bible, praying, sweating, worshiping, falling out in the aisle, and we don't really understand that what the kingdom of God is. We've heard and read that Jesus is the king. And you can't have a kingdom without a king. Let me give you what the kingdom of God is so you know what to look for. The kingdom of God is the eternal, sovereign, righteous reign of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. It is the eternal, sovereign, righteous reign of Jesus Christ. So that leads to the question of where does he reign? Jesus is the creator of everything. And so because he's the creator of everything, he reigns over everything. There's no part of his creation that he does not have dominion over. The kingdom of God is the eternal, sovereign, righteous reign of Jesus Christ. So the priority of your life and my life, the first thing that you and I ought to seek, is the desire for God's kingdom. Not a bigger car, not a newer car, more money, bigger house, newer clothes, a new wife, a new husband, boyfriend or girlfriend, new position, greater wealth. The priority of our lives as kingdom citizens is to bring our lives in alignment with what he says. The, the priority of the kingdom citizen is to bring your life under the alignment and submission of King Jesus. That's what this is about. It is conformity to everything that he commands. Not some, not most. Not the ones that you like. Everything that Jesus commands, you and I, have to submit to. That's why this is a hard message because folks don't want to submit. They don't want people to be in charge of them. People don't want authority. They want anarchy. They want to run their own lives. Kingdom citizens say, I don't want to run my own life because the life that I was running I done already made a mess of that, and I don't even know how to fix up the life that he gave me that I messed up. I want to bring my life under his alignment because he's the only one can fix the mess that I've created. And furthermore, I don't even know the good stuff that I should want and desire 
But if I bring myself under alignment with him, if I seek his kingdom and his righteousness, yeah. we're to seek the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what the word seek. I know some of you all played the game of hide and seek. Some of y'all probably called it tag. Some of y'all probably called it it. Y'all remember that? You it. Hide and seek said you go hide behind the tree, cover your eyes, and somebody go and find you. Right? Well, God says you don't have to come and find me. I can be found. I'm easily found. To seek means in order to find, to seek things by thinking, meditating, reasoning, to inquire into, to seek after, to strive after. You and I are required. They got this. Y'all stay with me. They got that. Y'all stay with me. Seeking the kingdom of God means that you and I have to focus and concentrate on seeking the kingdom of God. That means that you and I must read, think about, meditate on yes. what God says and how do I adjust my life to come under his authority? How do I best align my life with what God says? How do I reject and renounce those things that used to drive me? Those things that used to capture my eye, how do I change how I live? What do I go after in order to bring my life under the submission of Almighty God? What you thinking about? What do you meditate on? What are you looking at? What are those things that are going on around you that cause you to be unsettled? discontent with where you are and what you have. Do y'all know that Paul said, I have learned to be content. He says, I've had a little and I've had a lot, but I've learned to be content. You don't just get to be content. It is a process of becoming content when you've had a lot and you've had a little because Paul understood that the purpose of his life was to serve his king, to give his life to the advancement of the kingdom of almighty God. That is what this is about. And since maybe some of us had seen it and we don't recognize it, let me give y'all an Old Testament example. If y'all got y'all's Bibles, turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 1. He tells the kingdom citizens on the side of that mountain, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, this is what it says. Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. Here is King Solomon, and God says, Solomon, what do you want? Whatever you ask, I will give it to you. And Solomon says, Lord, I want wisdom because I want to do the right thing and I want to lead people the right way. The people in my sphere of influence, the people who are under my charge, Lord, I need wisdom to not only know what's right, but to do what's right. 
If I don't have a dime, I still need to do what's right. If I don't have a palace behind a gated wall, I still need to do what's right. If I don't have a gold-plated chariot, I still need the wisdom to do what's right. If I'm not dripping with gold, if I don't have the drip, if I don't have the jewel, if I don't have all of those things, Lord, I still need the wisdom to know the difference between right and wrong because it's not about these people. It is about pleasing you. And God said, Solomon, I heard your prayer. Because you have sought me and you asked for the right things, I'm going to give what you asked. And I'm going to give you the stuff that you didn't ask. How many of you all need some stuff that you didn't know that you ought to ask for? Here's the point that God says, listen, when you make me first, you make me the priority of your life. The stuff that your neighbors have, I can provide that for you too. I will give you that which is good down, pressed over, shaken together, running over when we put it to your bosom. I will give you more than you can dream, think, or imagine. I'm that kind of God. You won't have to worry. You might have an EBT card, but you don't have to worry. You won't go hungry. If you seek me, you will have everything that you need everything that you need. But y'all know what Jesus said? Man don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you understand that, listen, I don't have to have a Mercedes, but I got to have Jesus. I don't have to have a mansion, but I got to have Jesus. I don't have to have stuff from Jerry, but I got to have Jesus. I don't have to have a maiden and young, but I got to have Jesus. Listen, I can't live without the living water. I can't go a day without the bread of life. I cannot go a day without my master, Jesus Christ. I can deal with a whole lot of stuff, but if I don't have Jesus, I'm a poor man. I'm a poor man, but I'm rich when I got it. So Lord, if I can't have you, I don't want nothing at all. But if I only had Jesus, I got more than enough. How many of you all need a little more Jesus? How many of you all need a little more of the king in your life? How many of you all need a little more of Jesus just to walk with him, to talk with him, to spend a little more time with him, to have him bless you, to have him just encourage you, to lift you up? I don't know about you, but for me in 2023, I want it to be Jesus and me. If I don't get nothing else for Christmas, if I don't get another birthday, Lord, can I have more of you? Lord, you are going to be first in my life. Lord, nothing else matters if I don't have you. Is he first in your life? Is he taking second place? And if he's going to be first in your life, you have got to get up off the throne of your life and say, Jesus, take your rightful place. King Jesus, I worship you. I bow down to you. Whatever you tell me, I'm going to do. But that's what I'm going to do. In 2023, I'm going to serve the king and make him first. Whether you go with me or I go by myself, but I'm going to serve Jesus with everything that I got. And I'm allow him to tell me what's right and what's wrong. And when my neighbors say, what's the matter with you? Ain't nothing matter with me. I'm cool. I'm good. But guess what? If you want to go where I go, you're going to have to follow Christ because he's first in my life. Now, he can't be first in your life if you ain't never serving. If you ain't never given him your life, he can't be first. But today is the day. Don't let 2023 pass and you still just an unsaved person taking up a seat in the church. Don't be another person who is outside of the will and the goodness of God unsure about your salvation. Don't leave here and you ain't settled that thing. First things first is you got to get right with the Lord. And the beauty of this is you don't have to get right. He make you right. You have to submit and invite him into your life and say, Lord, I'm tired of being the boss. I'm tired of being the king or the queen of my life. I need somebody else to reign over this little kingdom that I have. Jesus, would you come and save me? Because I heard somewhere 
that you're the king of kings and you the Lord of lords. Lord, I heard somewhere that they hung you high and they stretched you wide. I heard somewhere, Lord, that they pinched you in your wrist and in your feet and you bled and died. But I also heard on the third day you rose from the dead that you're alive right now. And if I place my faith in you, that I can have new life in Christ. I want that kind of life. If you're that person and you're in this room and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to make him Lord, King, and Master of your life. Is there one who would dare make him first? Is there one? While you're thinking about that, maybe you don't have a church home. You're still in the COVID syndrome. And you're comfortable. Maybe go on to church online and maybe not. But let me tell you, the Bible says do not forsake yourself to gather in one to another. You need a church home. You can't get what you had this morning with the, with the choir. It ain't like that online. There's something different. And Jesus, is, he, he, he reigns everywhere. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. But there's something about when some folk who love him get together and they worship, then his presence comes down. You can't get that at home. If you need a church where we just want to worship and serve the Lord with everything that we have, you want to be a part of that, Lowry might be the place for you. We want to give you an opportunity to make Lowry your church home. Is there one? Is there one? Well, amen. amen. My time is up. Would you all stand to your feet? Thank you to all of our, excuse me. Why you all are standing on your feet. We're going to ask that the choir, since the spirit is high in the room, would the choir come on back up? We're going to finish this one on a song. Now, I don't know what they're going to sing. They don't either. <laughs> but when they start singing, we're going to start singing. All right. Amen. Amen. Grateful? Of whatever's going on, you Come know, on. we should be still grateful. Come on. Come because on. we know that whatever situation we go through, you know, we got a God that can deal with it. And so the passage just preached and talked about worrying. And I know we see things and with our eyes and we're wondering what's going on and we're just worried and concerned. But he just talked about it. There's no need to worry. Because God has it in control. And whatever it is, we should be thankful and grateful to God that. Yes, sir. He has it. I'm so grateful that you love me. I'm so grateful that you care. The cross you did not have to do it. But I'm thankful that you did. Larry, that's your part. Sing with the choir. Sing. I'm so grateful that you love me. Yeah. Come on. I'm so grateful that you care, yeah. The cross you did not have to do it. Good God. But I'm grateful that you did. Sing it one more time. Open up your mouth and sing, Larry. I'm Come so on. Hey. That you love me. Hey. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Again, the cross you did. The cross you did yeah. not have 
Father, you have blessed us, you have kept us, you have protected us, and some folks you have even healed, and you're still healing today. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We just want to give glory to your name this morning. We throw out our agenda and say, Lord, have your way in this place. Would you protect all of us as we go our separate ways? We thank you, Lord, for our visitors and our friends, for our members, for our family. Yes, but more importantly, Lord, we pray that you are glorified, yeah, yeah. that you are exalted and lifted up yes, sir. Yes, because sir. of what we presented here today. Yeah. Lord, we may have been off key. We may not have said the thing that we wrote down, but Lord, our hearts were in the right place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Lord, because our hearts are in the right place, yeah. would you accept us today? Yeah. So Lord, bless your people as yes, we Lord. depart. Yes, Be with us and keep us until we meet again. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you all. You can exit to the left, out the, out the right door, the back door. Follow the other. You make your way out. Greet all of our guests and visitors. Amen. Greet our guests and our visitors. <laughs>